the North German plain, miles and miles of rolling countryside. Good country for armor, ideal country for the fast moving mechanized thrust. In the event of war, Soviet strategy would be to strike hard and deep on a broad front, probably along the key routes westward. Wherever possible, they would bypass built up areas in order to avoid slowing their advance. But in West Germany alone, there are over 21,000 built up areas. No enemy can bypass them all. At the first sign of an enemy attack, NATO forces will move into pre designated defensive positions which may include many strategically placed towns and villages. Their task will be to contain the initial enemy thrust, to bog it down until we have time to mount a counter-offensive. The combat team commander gives his orders. Situation. Enemy forces. A motor rifle division is known to be advancing west and could be in the area of Lebenstedt, 8979, within the next 36 hours. Friendly forces. The battle group will have defend its area within boundaries, and this is the area, gentlemen. With three combat teams up. B combat team left. C combat team center. A combat team, R combat team right. And D combat team in depth. Attached. One troop, the Blues and Royals, call sign 3 4. One FOO. Call sign Golf 42. Two MFCs, call signs 53 Alpha, 53 Bravo. One detachment from Milan, call sign 71 Alpha, 71 Bravo. One section Royal Engineers, Echo 13 Charlie. Detached nil. Mission to hold the village of Nordassel, grid 8178 to hold the village of Nord Assel, grid 8178. Execution, general outline. The combat team will defend the village with two platoon strong points in the centre of the village. One one left, one two right. Okay, boys, the platoon commander's first task is to implement the combat team commander's anti-tank plan and sight his platoon weapons so that any digging in can be started right away. Then he must deploy the sections under his command in such a way as to be both mutually supporting and to bring down the most effective fire on the enemy. Down there, okay? Good arc of fire. Call Jones. I want you with three sections. Follow me. And I'll show you a position at the back covering the alleys. Okay? Let's go. One section. Follow me. Section. Initially, you'll have two section perimeter posts here and here. Preparation of these perimeter posts will be started as soon as the combat team arrives in the village. By first light, they should be manned and ready to receive visitors. The defensive fire tasks and arcs of fire are sighted so as to make killing areas of any routes the enemy might use to bypass the village and so force him to deploy and attack the village itself. When that happens, the outpost will first engage the enemy and then carry out a planned withdrawal to secure the rear of the village and take on a counter-attacking role. I want you over there facing that way, okay? Woody! Facing that way, okay? Lost it. An important part of the defensive preparations will be to rehearse this withdrawal so that everyone will know exactly what he's meant to do once the battle starts. Jacko. I want you to go down the gully, underneath the bridge, to cover me. Good team, follow me. Meanwhile, 
Back in the village, the Saffa section and assault pioneers will be busy mining the approach roads with off-route mines or any other anti-tank mines that are available. It is important to kill the enemy's tanks and personnel carriers as early as possible and force him to dismount and fight on foot. So these devices must be carefully sighted so as to cause the maximum possible obstruction on the enemy's line of advance. Roads must be cratered and blocked wherever possible. And if the platoon commanders have got their wits about them, all obstacles will be covered by fire and snipers can be deadly in this sort of situation. Go back up there, choose your position, okay? Yeah, think about it. Well, I'll come see you later. Yeah, roger. The GPMG, in its sustained fire roll, um. has a greater range and capability and should be sighted to cover the more likely enemy infantry approach routes, preferably without advertising its own position. Um. One open window is a dead giveaway. Open the other windows, will you? Several open windows are as good as camouflage, especially if you keep well back in the shadows. The platoon position will have been chosen, among other things, for the strength of its construction. Even so, it will need to be properly prepared. Two layers of chicken wire will keep out a grenade. A length of sacking will mask a light background. See without being seen, and you kill without being killed. Two sandbags laid end to end will stop a machine gun burst. So one line of sandbags is put round the fire position and another reinforces the outside wall of the building itself. And each layer should be banged down until it is hard and firm. And then everything should be damped down, both to keep the sand properly compacted and to stop the dust from flying when the weapon is fired. Finally, there's the overhead protection, a door or a table or even just shoring up the beams, anything that will shield you if the enemy brings the roof down around your ears. The last thing to be deployed should be the anti-personnel devices and booby traps. For obvious reasons, these are set out only when everyone else is in position. When you're thin on the ground, the Claymore mine is a very useful weapon to cover an awkward flank approach to the platoon position. Hello, uh, India 1, this is India 1, 2, uh, Sunray speaking. All subunits now in position ready. Over. So now, everything is ready. All it needs are the finishing touches. First contact with the enemy will probably be made by our reconnaissance troops, deployed ahead of our defensive position. Hello, India 1, uh, this is Tango 6 Ring Alpha. Reference my contact. Moving now, moving now. Over. First to engage will almost certainly be the artillery. When the range closes to under 2,000 meters, the enemy will be in the combat team's killing areas. Then we hit him hard and often. Hello India 1, this is India 1 3, contact at 1320 hours, grid 826807. Over. India 1, uh, roger, out. What would that grid sound, Major? The grid, sir, is 826807, which is there, sir. I'm going to go out to the outpost and join the FOO. Right, sir. Okay, come on, we're off. The whole purpose of the outpost is to stop the enemy armour bypassing the village and force him to deploy. Fire! You'll have to dismount and start to fight the hard way, on foot. Hello, 5 or 3 Charlie, 5 or 3 Bravo, 5 or 2 Walkers. A 
Once the enemy is firmly committed to attacking the village, the combat team commander decides to call in those outposts which are under attack. Drum half now. Drum half now. Move! Move now. Move now. Under cover of smoke. Move! Under covering fire. And with the uncommitted outpost still preventing the enemy from bypassing the village, part of the perimeter force pulls back to its reserve position fighting all the way. It should be a classic demonstration of the principles of fire and manoeuvre, inflicting maximum casualties on the enemy and, at the same time, drawing him into the selected killing areas inside the village itself. Now the rehearsal pays off. Everyone knows the route. Everyone knows the drill. Jackal! All they've got to do is remember it. In this type of warfare, there are no second chances. Inevitably, an enemy attack on a fixed position will be preceded by heavy concentrations of artillery fire. And when the enemy finally does come, he'll come in force. Tanks are the prime target. But we can't just wait for the tanks to come to us. We can use ditches, sewers, anything that will enable us to get forward and stop the enemy in his tracks. So now, it's man to man, hand to hand. See without being seen, and you kill without being killed. All right, Cole Robinson. Not so bad, sir. There's about six or seven just around back of that building there. So the, the bar with the windows, you know. There. Now we have the advantage of being in prepared positions. The enemy has got to come and winkle us out. And to do that, he must show himself. The effective beaten zone of the Claymore is large and lethal enough to make the enemy look elsewhere for an approach route. Hello, India 1, this is India 1-2. Uh, contact as at now, a six enemy seen moving behind callsign 1-1's position. I'm observing, a 1-1 acknowledged. Hello. India 1, uh, roger, out. Sir, two platoon report, six enemy moving to the west and behind one platoon. Looks they might outflank them fairly soon. Switch to two! Fire into smoke! Hello, one, this is one, two, uh, contact, enemy now in houses six and seven. I'm under heavy enemy fire. Over. India one, uh, roger, out. Sir, two platoon reports they're under heavy fire from the houses number six and seven. I'm going to order drop kick from the south. Right, sir. In that way. Hello, one, two, India one, three, and Tango three, four. Any counterattack must be mounted quickly before the enemy can organize his defenses. You can dispense with your heavy kit for the sake of speed, but not your basic drills. See without being seen or
Two-section attack needs to be controlled and led from the front by the platoon commander. Go! The gun team split from the rest of the section and set up on their own. Firstly, to kill any enemy who are driven out of the house. Secondly, to supplement the supporting fire being laid down by number two platoon. Then, the section goes in by the shortest route. Hello, Tango 3-4, this is India 1-3. Hole in house now, over. Uh, Tango 3-4, we'll go. All right. The platoon commander now brings his second section into action. With house number seven cleared, now defended by the first section, it becomes the springboard for the second section's attack on house number six. Again, they won't go in by the obvious route. The more unexpected the point of entry, the less likely it is to be booby-trapped. But it's always better to clear a house from the top. It's harder to throw a grenade up than it is to drop one down. To clear a house room by room needs six men. A section leader, two bombers, two entrymen, and one man to watch their backs and to link with the GPMG. The drill is very straightforward. Today. The entrymen go in, firing into anything that might conceal an enemy, and into the room below. They must be absolutely certain that one room is clear, room clear. before they start on the next. The drill is repeated, room by room, until the whole house is clear. The drill is simple enough. But it needs training, speed, and good old-fashioned guts to make it effective. Hello, India 1-3. This is India 1-3 Bravo. House number six cleared. Over. Fighting in built-up areas is a slow, tiring, and often bloody form of combat. Every inch of the ground has to be fought for, defended, if necessary, recaptured, and defended again. The one consolation is, that it's a damn sight harder for the enemy.